Good afternoon to almost the last thing happening here. We are very happy that you're still here. Um, and we are going to discuss much less than everything now. Where do we come from, where are we, and where do we want to go? And um, we have got some interesting people who know the answers to all these questions. And I hope it's different answers and um, that we can argue about the difference of the answers. So I'm very happy um, that Mazumi Kawaguchi from NHK is here. Yes. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Elma Kruse from C Major, who is Hello. trying to sell the things you produce in the whole world. Jan Moito, the head of Unitel. Um, Mark Wilkinson, president of Universal and Deutsche Grammophon, sorry, of Deutsche Grammophon. I wish it was president of Universal. <laughs> um, but no, it's just... <laughs> It's just Deutsche Grammophon. Deutsche Grammophon. Okay. What did you say, President of the Universe? It's me. I know, I know. Call you uh, Mr. President. Uh, not President. Um, mayor of... Uh, <laughs> head of Art uh, and Music, uh, Wolfgang Bergmann. Thank you for you uh, joining us and discussing a little bit with us about what we have been seeing and what we are going... Uh, to do in the future. And perhaps the first question uh, to you, Ms. Kawaguchi, you come here, with what expectations do you come? What is it uh, you want to find? What is what your audience expects? What did you find? And especially, what didn't you find? <laughs> well, <laughs> what am I supposed to say? Such a big question. What are the expectations? Yeah. What, 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 you come here, see lots of films, and perhaps yes. can take some back with you to, to Japan. What, what, what is it you're looking for? Yes, just um, as you know, the Japanese people is, have no background about classical music. So, and then they have a so really concrete image. So I try to find um, things to suit their ideas, their images. So what is this image? Is it, Images. It has to be golden and really classical? Yeah, um, half of them uh, expect uh, the really, really traditional and then really beautiful and then colorful sometimes. Okay. Good sounding. Yes, okay. but the core fun, the cross, core, um, core, yeah, yeah. core cross okay. funds are looking for more modern. Okay. And then something stimulating. So Which means more explanational or in the direction more modern? What is more modern for you? Modern is a, yes, really, mm, how can I say that? There is many, many stimulating things. So I pick up the each. Okay. Yes. So I try to make colorful. Yes. Okay. So to bring something new as well. So you have to have a mixture between the traditional yeah. classical music and Yes. Well, bits of whatever modern is, we will discuss yes, that. Definitely, yes. Emma, you, you have to sell these things in the whole world. And the good thing about music, not just classical music, but as well pop music, is it, we always celebrate it as a global art because it's music, everybody can understand it. But it is not really global, is it? There are complete different traditions, different ideas in the whole world. Is it? You experience that you can sell everything everywhere, or how, how, how is that with this global aspect of music? Well, that's true. It's not, everything is not sellable everywhere. We are looking for um, products, programs, which has a bright audience, has a chance to be in more than five, six, seven, eight countries, because otherwise we cannot survive. It's very simple. And uh, sometimes uh, when we are lucky and have a, a real nice production, then we might get 20, 25 countries. But, in, but you're right. They are local stars, which only work in uh, certain territories. For example, Alanya is a wonderful tenor, and he's a superstar in France, uh, but maybe not so much in Germany. You know? okay. And there are, uh, there are limitations. Of course, there are superstars like Anna Netrebko, Lang Lang, Jonas Kaufmann, and a few more which could work in a lot of markets. 
But is this aspect something which limits television in itself already? Mr. Moito, you, you are producing all these big stars of opera and classical music. You are presenting Anna Netrebko and Rolando Villazon and the great conductors of Bar and Boim and so on. Like the people who are sold everywhere, who everybody in the whole world wants to see. Is there a limitation by thinking global because you always just give the people what they expect? Or are there as well for you ideas to say, oh, there is an interesting person, I know he is just working in Germany or in France or in I don't know where, and I try to find a market for him? Mm, our philosophy is not to give to the people what they expect. First, because the moment we are deciding and the moment people get what we produce are two different moments in the line of time. And in all my activities, it doesn't have only to do with music. I think once I thought I would know what the public would expect, and it was completely wrong. So we do not know. <laughs> it's n and it's really not how it works. Our concrete uh, philosophy is that we try to capture, uh, to produce what we consider that is worth of being producing and is worth of being preserved. That's but there are as simple things as which are quite safe, aren't there? Uh, if, if you do an opera with Netrebko and Barenboim conducting and Rolando singing, it's kind of a safe thing, isn't it? And where are your revolutionary parts? Where do you say, OK, I try something. I can fail here, perhaps. Uh, is, is there an example of that as well in, in, in the productions you did the last year, for example? Yes, definitely. Could you name one? Ernst uh, or someone from Unitel, could you give some examples? Yeah, yeah. But it's not, I mean, revolutionary parts. I think what we are talking about, revolution in what? In uh, subject or in the way how it's done? Or in where do you want? Uh, well, money? first of all, I, I, I was talking about, we, we, now we are in this business of stars, of international stars. Um, uh, but as well, it is, of course, a question of aesthetics. I think that it's diff different as well. But are there productions? Per okay, so I, 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 I really want to get a grip on it and not this okay, openness. So as far as the revolution, as far as, as stars, today's or future are concerned, when we started working together with Nelsons, mm -hmm. he was not a big star. Even yeah. Christian Thielemann, when you started that. Yeah, Christian Thielemann, uh, that was the challenge. That was something completely different. As far as Christian Thielemann is concerned, I wanted to contribute that this big German conductor would be, for instance, would take place also outside of Germany in television. Right. For instance, at Arte, where he was not present. So that was a challenge. It was not a revolution. In terms of... And it worked out well? For him, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we will know more in May, I think, won't we? Uh, when <laughs> the Berlin Philharmonics are... No, obviously it worked uh, well. I mean, if you look at the ratings and what has... But, but, but you invest by that as well. You are gripping these artists, make a contract with them, and then you really follow them and, and try to build an international career right with them, don't you? Yes, yes. We, and if we follow someone, then we follow someone. This is one of the principles, and it doesn't have to be something which we believe people expect tomorrow. So then we follow this old-fashioned And perhaps that's where the experiment idea. happens as well. If an artist you work together with really wants to do something yeah, the experiment, then you tell him as well, okay, you may do this one thing, don't you? The experiments in our area happens on what we film. So, I mean, okay. uh, I could give you some titles where we filmed uh, operas nobody wanted to show because they were too experimental or whatever. Yeah. And um, so it happens. So, and as far as the filming is concerned, I think in our case it's rather, I mean, we follow the time. Obviously, we, people who are working for us or we are working with the producers, they produce today, so they use today's models and right. ways of producing. It's completely changing, but I, I wouldn't talk about revolution. Okay. Wolfgang, 
you you really have to see what how many people watch what you broadcast. You you know what the people want. Mr. Moito says I don't give the people what they expect. But on no, I do not know what the people will expect the day I deliver. Okay, that's the precise. Do you know that better by by surveys, by seeing what <laughs> they switch on, what programs fail, what programs are successful? I mean, you have got this very difficult situation between France and uh, Germany as well. I mean, even even the composers are different probably. In France, everybody loves Rameau, and uh, in Germany, everybody wants to listen to Strauss. Uh, there is already a cultural gap between these close countries, isn't it? But the question is, do you know what people want to see? Well, first of all, we quite often know uh, the audience personally because it's so little. <laughs> so you ring the doorbell and say, hey, did you like it? <laughs> the other thing is, and that's the bad news, I mean, the RT audi audience is not really different to any other audience. It's sometimes, that's one of the difficult things with RT. It has a wonderful brand, but everything, everybody thinks uh, it is an audience that it has been in Harvard, as, at least, which is not true. It's, it's just an audience, and it behaves more or less the same than any other audience. And But there are there expectations? The, the, um, from the audience? Yes. Well, as soon I as think, they see uh, the little art in the top left of the TV, do they expect something different as if they see RTL, for well, example? Well, the good thing is if they see art, they, they think it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's not sometimes, may I say, so super good, they think it's good. Okay. So we, I, I, you, lately I learned we, we got a love brand. Okay. And uh, that's true. But actually. you have to fill a love brand. You have to become a love brand. Just the Arte logo? Yeah, well, that, that you know? was the people who were there before. So they made it. So you are living brand. from the past? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, we, we are, uh, me, I'm enjoying the love brand. And yes, you can show more things and you will be found by more people, even if it's a, bit, a little bit more sophisticated. But, of course, if there are stars, people come. Uh, the audience doubles, or it's it's much more. So it's it's not it's not really 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 uh, different. And uh, what I can see is, and I think this is the biggest problem from my point of view. Um, what I can see is there is a big old audience following the classical music and the classical way of performing music. Right. And there is a small part of audience that is maybe doing both, wanting to see the classical stuff, but also more experimental uh, stuff. But it's, it's smaller because it's younger, because there are so little like, young people, mostly in Germany and France, is a little bit better. So the choice, if you are uh, going for ratings, is usually, uh, let's better do the, the real classical traditional stuff. Because you're on the safe side. Then. Yeah. But, I mean, people are getting older and older, and, and time, life, as, as far as I know, is not endless. No, I've heard about longer that. than any time before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good news. So you can experiment more. And pr pr probably the situation is almost like in Japan. I mean, you have got this hardcore audience, and you have the audience who wants to perhaps uh, expect as well from television to take the hand and to show them into, uh, to, to, to lead them away into the world of classical music. And you have developed some formats on television where you open up classical music. You do the classic lounge, you do the different uh, stars of tomorrow, whatever um, happens in Arte. Is that a concept where you say, this is the way we want to continue, this is our little revolution in the mind of the hardcore classic people, uh, or is that something where you say, in the end, we don't take people to the real classical music by that? No, we have to do that, definitely. Even if it does not work uh, um, for the first years, we have to do it because we have to open up uh, a form, we have to open up uh, for another audience, we have to catch the younger people, we have to adapt to the different way of, um, uh, the, to the different, different culture mix of each and everybody of the younger people. So this urban idea of having shows where we mix classical music and what we call whatever pop music, uh, this is this belongs to the real um, uh, to, to 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 the real uh, taste of of people who who are around. I mean, everybody nowadays, or many people nowadays, like both. But is it always authentic? I mean, the, the classical programs with pop musicians and. Uh, 
my experience is that the hardcore classic fans say, oh, this classic is not my classic, and the pop people say, well, okay, there's a pop star, but I don't, I'm not interested in classical music. So you want to have both audiences, but in the end you don't get any. Yes and no. Uh, um, no, uh, to, to the, uh, no, we have difficulties with audience in terms of television, but yes, it's authentic. Each and everybody who attended an Arte Lounge and has seen this crowd of 600 people, young, middle, old, watching uh, completely different musicians and being aware that they freak out with, with peaches. And um, uh, 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 10 minutes later, there is a, I, I don't know, clarion and clarinet soloist mm -hmm. doing something it, and it's complete silence and people listen so that's a wonderful experience being there so as an event it's completely authentic Te television still um, difficult. Perhaps this is a topic we can talk about later as well that uh, television still has the authority to present things different than at YouTube where I have to, or at Google, where I have to Google a name to find it and I don't have the others uh, which can inspire me as well. But we can talk about that later. And Mark, um, the CD market has been changed already because it was, ex in, in, yeah, it, it had to survive basically because you have to earn money with it. Uh, you don't get the money from the government. So you had to react on all these changing market things of iTunes first, Spotify, whatever we have, uh, YouTube. Um, would you say that you are in the end of changing your approach to sell this music, or are you still in the middle of the process? Well, I think linking that question to television, I think wherever, wherever you are in the world, classical music on television, in whatever iteration, remains incredibly important, in fact, critical to the business um, of selling CDs uh, and to the, to the business of, uh, of breaking artists. So we're really, whether it's conventional or, or whether it's experimental, what we have to do as a business is make those appearances, make those concerts, make those performances, make those documentaries count and, and count towards sales. Um, obviously, on the one hand, the bigger the opportunity, the bigger the audience, the, the bigger the sell and the bigger the sale. And in fact, in our, uh, in our pre-talk, you and I talked about a moment in time that's certainly sort of legendary in, in the Deutsche Grammophon office here in Germany, which is, is seen as being responsible for really breaking Anna Netrebko to the mainstream. And that was an appearance on television. But it was a sort of out of context appearance. It was an appearance on the Wettendahl show where she sat next to Robbie Williams and you know, they hummed and sang a tune together. But from that moment, after that moment, many, many more people knew about this artist and became curious uh, and investigated. And that was a critical moment. So I think these moments, in a small way or in a, in a bigger way, um, can come out of television. But that would mean that we don't need classical productions anymore because Wettendass can do it better. I mean, Wettendass won't be, so won't be <laughs> doing it in the future anymore. But, um, is there a point where you came already in the recording industry, where TV is coming to, that um, we are not thinking or we can't think in these uh, ivory towers of our own um, uh, f hobbies and our own music, but we have to learn from presenting, selling, uh, and, and uh, telling stories about musicians. Is that something which has to change? I mean, I think well, every I, I think a lot classic that happens anyway. you are doing I mean, has got an EPK yeah. now, an electronic, yeah. press kit, yeah. a yeah. <laughs> electronic press kit of three minutes, which is almost like an MTV video uh, ten years ago. Yeah. And the way that these are shown and presented um, on television, again, in, you know, in all major and important markets, as part of uh, chat shows or as part of documentaries or as part of features on ZDF Aspecta, for example, you know, they, they remain very, very important. But what I do think we have to do is always try to think big. And we should always you know, discuss with people like Jan. I mean, you know, the, the, the traditional, the, the operas still remain very, very important to us. You set it up. You film it, it's broadcast, and then we, you know, we have a product. Um, and very often a, a very, very important product 
for either an established or, or a new artist. So without these big productions, to whom, um, or to, to some people may seem conventional, a lot of what we do wouldn't be possible. Mr. Mato? Yeah, I do not like to be treated like a reactionary guy or whatever, only because I am old. <laughs> but um, I remember, and perhaps, uh, I mean, just to answer your question, I remember, I am definitely the only one here, the days when a concert was filmed, let's say with Carlos Kleiber, three times, four times, then complete mm, editing for weeks or for months, in order to produce something which was the final product, which were those 60 minutes forever to be preserved, to be shown on television, the artist said yes to that, and that was it. Because also of limited time on television. Yeah. And I think where the revolution took place outside, we have unlimited time, not on television, that would be, but we have for the first time in the history, we have unlimited time available to show whatever has been produced through new technology. So I think it leads to something which has been mentioned at the beginning, that what we produce may be, may be today a complete opera, but for tomorrow it can be a basis for a documentary. Or for another thing, it can be that you just take three minutes and put it together with other three minutes, or you have the same, um, the same theme played by this orchestra, by this orchestra, and so on and so on. So just to make it, I think what we produce today can be used in so many, in so many different ways that talking only about television is, I think, yesterday's subject, if I may uh, say absolutely. so. So we are in a different environment, and the question is, how do we react? Mm -hmm. And on our side, and then I finish, uh, we film, we make interviews with the artists, we archive all that, we have, I don't know how many cameras, we keep that, we have the conductor's camera, then you have the behind the scenes, you have all that material which can be used today in that way, tomorrow in a different way, in the future, in a way we can't imagine. Always having in mind, I mean, first of all, to, to have eternal uh, space means as well it's more difficult to find things, so you have to have a structure to find things. And the second thing is, well, the technology is so cheap and easy right now that almost everybody can do it. And I think especially the recording industry sees that. Uh, I, I have just been in, in, in New York and talked to Peter Gelb at the Metropolitan Opera and he told me, yeah, uh, 20 years ago Deutsche Grammophon came and said, yeah, but I want this singer and this singer for this production and then we do a CD and perhaps we do a video. Uh, nowadays I've got my eight cameras hanging here. I've got a room where I've got some person who is doing that on a rem remote control and I'm distributing it in the cinemas and sell my own CDs. I don't need Deutsche Grammophon anymore. And probably he says, I don't need Unitel anymore. And he says, I don't care whether I'm shown on Arte. Is that he, something he, where... Can I answer that? He didn't <laughs> say that when I presented him with a rather a large check quite recently. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Can I just pick up on, on something that you said, Jan, if, if, if you don't mind? Yeah, of course. I think, Go ahead. Um, I think us as a business changing and being able to capitalize on the excitement of an event very, very quickly, by which I mean having a product available the next day. Um, so, you know, you film and you produce and we distribute, uh, perhaps on, on iTunes, the next day where, where a concert uh, or an opera or a recital is first of all seen on television at eight o'clock on a Sunday evening and then at midnight or midday the next day is then available to buy and that's the sort of thing that that certainly i would like to work on because that new year's concert from the, vienna the new year's concert why is it not ours, available? because it's a myth the why new year's is it not available the following day yeah but it's available the following week more or less yeah i mean in 10 know, days i think but within those seven days a lot of people have lost interest i would Probably. say and moved on and you know bought something else but Elmer, the, the, there's another problem about uh, the internet, because if I go to YouTube, I can see, uh, I mean, if, if I sit on my desk, I go to YouTube, say Rigoletto Pavarotti, and it says, oh yeah, this is the film, one hour, 36 minutes, and then no, it's I longer. It on my it's second, longer. sorry? It's longer. Yeah, however, <laughs> uh, and then I've got it on my other television, watch it, work on the side, I don't pay a penny, 
and I have got a great recording. Uh, and now well, you have to go out in the world and have to sell that stuff. Yeah, well, great experience, well, I don't know. So far, I would say uh, YouTube is, well, first of all, difficult to find things. Second, quality is not always what we, you know, Jan invested a lot of money in that, and the quality is different. Um, of course, the channels have changed. We started in the in the late 60s uh, when Leo Kirch uh, started this whole business. He had at ZDF uh, at 7:30 a slot where he can do a three-hour opera, and this is of course has dramatically changed. So in the main uh, stations like uh, BBC, uh, NHK uh, First Channel, but also ZDF, there's less classical music. Uh, you started in uh, 2000 with Arte, with Dreiser, with different things. Uh, Arte, Arte and Dreiser are longer, but it has. There's a dramatic shift from you know main stations to smaller stations. But anyhow, you know, for example, I, I, what I want to add something to Mark. We had this Horowitz uh, celebration, 25th uh, years of his death, and we brought to Dreiser and Arte, you know nice Peter Gelb films, uh, very old. And you could see afterwards in the Amazon charts that the CDs and also the videos from, from Sony, you know, climbing up. So television okay. is still important. And of course, the distribution channels Because it's are the changing. order of things. Sorry? Because it's the order of things. It's the order of things is, uh, well, I think we are moving more and more into the film business that we start with uh, exploitation in cinemas. And digital cinema allows us to do a lot of things um, in cinemas, and we have now demographics and all digitized cinemas, uh, especially in slots like Saturday afternoon, right. Sunday morning, they're interested in looking for arts programming. So there's, there's, there's a possibility always, but I think still television is very strong uh, and important uh, to drive artists to, to look for really high numbers and to okay. drive sales. Is that your responsibility, Wolfgang, to, to uh, look into the whole life of music and present and pick out the things where you say, oh, this is what we consider valuable or great or good, and we make the choice for you. We offer you things you wouldn't find in the worldwide net in the endlessness of, of, of digital uh, halls and, and, and tele uh, uh, internet things. Is that something, how you make a program to pick what you think people wouldn't see without you? Well, f first of all, and thank God, not personally me, but it's a bunch of people, it's a group. I mean, artists, many people, and we have long discussions what to do or not, and so it's, it's, it's a variety <laughs> of stuff we are, we are showing, but yes, it's curation. We, we try, to, we try to, to, to highlight certain things, to emphasize certain things, which we identify uh, out of different reasons, maybe, being quality, being important, mm -hmm. being worth filmed with more money than YouTube stuff, uh, being put into a proper form that can be preserved uh, uh, for uh, f forever. So basically it's the idea of Schirmacher, the editor of uh, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, who said, I don't care about the internet because I decide what is valuable to read. This is what the printed paper pad is doing. Well, we shouldn't say, we shouldn't not care about the internet. Right. It's there and it's changing things and, and things are moving. But internet and this change, uh, the impact is overemphasized in the public dis discussions from my point of view. Up until now, uh, things for to 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 make and and to compose a, tele, a television program, it's still more or less uh, the same. The only thing is we can't be sure that people find us. Exactly. We we need to to put much more effort on 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 marketing on 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 finding our audience. Right. Uh, the, the in in former times. It was clear the audience is coming, but now we have to go with our t stuff towards the audience, and there the internet comes back. There the social media comes back, because we have to use it uh, to, to find uh, our audience. 
because this is a, it seems to be a concept as well. First, we had, I mean, uh, 20 years ago, we had uh, TV shows on the first and second program where opera was normally in, you know? It was uh, Erkennen Sie die Melodie, or by Am Laufenden Band, uh, René Collo came and sang an aria. Now, uh, we said, okay, we have, and this is Moito's uh, argument, we have more time for classical music or for pop music or for culture, but we put it on Arte. So we have a little uh, l less audience already. Now you say, okay, on Arte we have a uh, film and films as well, so we put it on the internet, because there we have endless time to, to, to show things. Doesn't it always, uh, doesn't classical music disappear more and more in the niche and go out of the prime time programs where we don't have the access to people who can be confronted for the first time with this music? Wasn't it a mistake to have all these channels? Do I need to answer that? Yes, please. No, no, no. I think uh, uh, if we want to move, perhaps we uh, could we try. Uh, should I take the discussion over? No. no. Could we try just to to remind us that we, today producing and distributing is not the same anymore. So, in other words, in the past, television was. Uh, Commissioner, it has been produced for television only, so it was the identity of production and distribution, the same for you, yeah? And those two are more and more separated, unless you have those few lucky cases, Anna Monica Pandelea is somewhere here, where she say and can get time in the main channel, and then she produces something which has to be produced and so forth. So this is, but those are exceptions and we are grateful for that, but it's not the rule anymore. So that means that we have, there is not a line of separation. And those are two different activities. And television, in the sense we are discussing here, is one of those ways of distributing. It's perhaps hard for television and so, on the production side, it means if someone is foolish enough to film hundreds of hours or to do whatever, knowing he has to think, how can I recover? And traditional television is only one source. And the problem we have today is, and I think this is, I believe, a very important question for the future, how the production in the future will be financed. Because unfortunately, those golden days where a network could finance so many hours of thing and pay for 120% of the cost so we could live from the 20 and still believe and so this is gone and but it doesn't mean that there is no need and it doesn't mean that there is and also this public getting older or no it depends where you go into the concert i mean anyway so if we assume that there are enough people all over the world together to watch what someone is producing, and this is still the case. Yeah, we have on the production side. I'm not talking about. It, we have to find ways how to recoup our investments. Right. And today, <coughs> there is no way to get the investment back from the market. So, will we will we be subsidized in the future? I mean, this is also a big question. I mean, you have uh, in Germany, we have this incredible system. I don't know how many opera houses, uh, millions of uh, euro put uh, together and so forth. They do expensive productions. The subsidies used to be, well, still are with the public television. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about, the no, other no, hand. I'm talking about uh, the state, cities, uh, municipalities, sustaining theaters, which is the basis of our work. We still rely on what's being produced for either for the event or for the theater. And if you just imagine that production for Salzburger Festspiele can cost between 500,000 and 1 million euro. I mean, pure reproduction cost. That this production is being shown in lucky phase 10 times, perhaps, in two years. Yeah? 10 times, times 2,500 people. So it's being seen by 25,000 people. So the average cost per is very high. And if you, on the other hand, 
just remind yourself that if you do not take into account artists and whatever, that you can produce a decent production for something, I mean television, uh, no, audiovisual production, for something like 150 or 200,000, which is already on the high end high quality production, then you have to ask yourself if it does not make sense and it's already happening for the theaters, for the venues and so far and so on, to try to get additional money to film or to help to produce what's being produced because e, to preserve it for the future, I mean for the future generation, to produce something which could be shown outside, and so far and so on. So I think the parameters are changing. The okay. revolution took place around. Okay, Wolfgang, you wanted to answer to that. Uh, I wanted to, to try to answer to your uh, original question. I mean, um, of course, uh, it would be great uh, if we would, would have still uh, networks that are soloists on the market where we can like educate our people like uh, it was in former time but it's not the case anymore we are on a market but that's so the market is changing and, is talking and, and, of, and, and no 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 I'm, I'm, I, I want to talk about mm -hmm. another point which mm -hmm. comes back to it in a way but is an other aspect um, as, so we, we can't we, we can't just say uh, we put it on prime time on ZDF all the time, facing uh, ZDF going down in rating so much that everybody says, okay, then we cut down the, the subsidies, so that doesn't make sense. Um, but what I do agree is we don't have a lack of quantity nor a lack of quality of productions. Mm -hmm. We do have a lack of real big, good productions that tear down the wall between the ones who we already have as an audience, and the ones who should be um, should be confronted uh, uh, with with arts in general and with music and classical uh, music and special, and it is definitely a lack of programs that can do that. Because if we had those programs, we would put them on prime time on Arte and even Anka, who is doing a tough, good, great job on ZDF sometimes can bring stuff on prime time or on the good time. And the result is always super, super intense because we not only satisfy and feed the audience that is already there, we might find pick up some, uh, uh, pick up some, uh, some new, uh, new ones. And, and that's, I think, the challenge. Mm -hmm. That's the challenge. And talking about the Berlinale, for example, big cinema films, like cinema films that are targeting Arts, music, dance. Yesterday, Wim Wenders right. uh, got the golden beer. I mean, his pina for dance uh, was worth, in a way, more than 100 uh, yeah. wonderful quality TV productions we put uh, on, on, on TV, just to have one big, super quality film that breaks the wall and, and reaches another audience. And, and please bring us those programs. Mazumi, is, is, is the same discussion going on in Japan? Is, is that as well the same problem that uh, television stations, internet, uh, they have to kind of uh, reorganize? Yes, actually, <coughs> the last June, the, our charter for broadcasting uh, uh, was partially amended and then uh, from next April, this April, we can uh, broad, uh, stream online at the same time of uh, broadcasting. Right. And then we can also download uh, some short clips uh, on the internet before initial broadcasting. So it's really changing. So, And then also NHK produce uh, one idea the total, total viewership rating system. Right. So, and then we can uh, something big project. Mm -hmm. And then, so now really we are talking about such things. Okay. Yes. And then uh, I can imagine that maybe that the 
the problem is the thing is the performance is really long, long. Length is a big <laughs> issue. So, so maybe, yeah, yeah. So, sorry, yeah. No, no, good, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to pass it over to Elmer because mm -hmm. if I got these two statements now, uh, yeah. once I heard Moito saying, okay, we have to organize, uh, the restructuring of the market means that we have to rethink how we produce and we have to produce in different ways and we have to do one production which can fit in the internet, which can, f where I can take three minutes out, which I can, where I can show the whole opera or the whole show, which I can do as a show, which I can have in an explanation program, so I have to record one thing and use it for many different things. On the other hand, I hear Bergman saying, I'm waiting for the big Wim Wenders film and the one big shot which tears down the wall. For me, it is uh, both logical, but it seems to be, for producers, two different approaches to one film or to one idea. What is your experience there? What, what sells better? We need both. It's very simple. We need both. <laughs> Did you say something right? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, thi the thing is also, um, uh, with regards to format and content, I think what we need, uh, I, you're right, the, the, the times when we have three uh, um, hours of opera on prime time on the main stations seem to be <laughs> You know, going and 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 ZDF Trump Times is doing that, uh, uh, thankfully at at 10 o'clock or you know one or two times a year. The ARD is not is is I think doing nothing. So um, and NHK is doing that from time to time, uh, ver you know, very carefully. And uh, we know the ratings. And what we need, I think, is also we need. Um, uh, shorter formats, we need also educational aspects, what Masumi mentioned, because uh, the time where, when Lenny Bernstein made the Young People's Concert, he could, he know, knows at that time that a lot of people know what he's talking about. When we start an educational process today, we have to s start from scratch zero. So the knowledge about, I don't know, die Fuge or something is no more there because in, 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 mu in school, there's no more music education anymore. So I think there's a new development needed and we are together with Arte doing a, a one project, uh, a, you know, breaking this walls a little bit down and this is important because people have to understand that, uh, that uh, classical music is not only boring, it has emotions, it has stars, it has fantastic music, uh, and that's the reason why we're doing that all the time. And this is a chance also to break new artists. But, uh, but you, do, you do need stars. Right. And you do need the talent with the charisma to carry that. And that's a question that, of course, we ask ourselves every single day, are these people here? Right. I was telling uh, Jonathan Gruber the other day, who's in the audience today, um, with our Beethoven 9 app, which allows you to listen to the music and follow the music, follow the score at the same time. We have four different versions. One of them is audiovisual with Leonard Bernstein, and that by far and away is the most clicked on and viewed, and viewed. People gravitate towards that incredibly electrifying personality. Um, and, you know, maybe we don't have enough people like that. And if we had, you know, more stars with, with you know, huge doses of charisma, and character and talent, um, we might be able to create the events. Um, so we have you know, we've, all, we've all experienced in our time, look at the 1993 tennis concert, mm -hmm. that is by far and away the best-selling classical DVD video of all time. And that was based on an event. And maybe, and you know, Wolfgang uh, sort of touched on this, there probably aren't the events either created by people like ourselves or others um, in the last few years um, that, that actually we need and the business needs. The business needs events to but pull in big stars audiences. have to be made as well. Stars I mean, have to be they made. They are there probably, yeah. but they have and, to be made. And, and make no mistake, television is very important to me. Uh, through events, that's what you said. And that, not, that, not always, yeah. but often th through events. I mean, first of all, stars have to be they, good. Yeah. But uh, to, to make them known needs events. And this is something, if we see, where, where do people watch today? It's either YouTube or it is in the cinemas and where, where they still, again, can have a collective thing. Or you said uh, New Year's concert, New Year's concert, which is an event. It's like a football game. You know, you don't want to f see the football game one day later. You want to see it live. And uh, you want to see the premiere of uh, the, the New Neujahr's uh, concert on Neujahr. Du willst es nicht, uh, you don't want to see it on the 2nd of January. Uh, is that something where television has to go as well to have this event character of music and to focus it or it doesn't 
doesn't it matter when it is broadcasted? But I think as well, Arte Lounge, and so they, they, they are making an event, and they are approaching this idea of making stars through an event to, to where they have to do something else than just singing a, an aria. They present them, they come there as human beings, they talk, they uh, talk about their enthusiasm. Is that something where, where we go as well, and where you go in Arte as well, to establish these events and this humanity and hum human beings, artists as human beings? Uh, first of all, I, I would say um, we, we were supposed to talk about the future. So a part of the past that remains being part of the future of television, from my point of view, will be <laughs> the event. Mm -hmm. The live event uh, is definitely something which will work on television for the future and might be a, 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 a very important uh, um, a job for television also to continue to do stuff like this. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. Second thing is we need to create brands, whether they are events, whether they are broad uh, um, series, whether they are documentary series or, or just places, spaces in the program. Uh, that become known as a place where people find what they are, what they want to see, mm -hmm. and and they can be sure it's going to be quality what's shown there. Second, the third uh, thing mentioned the creation of stars, and now I come back and uh, uh, to the internet world, uh, um, and and, and I, I do correct myself. Uh, in this field, things are changing because the phenomenon of creation of stars uh, through the internet in these days is definitely something new. And the type of stars that I created is definitely new. And the speed they are, they, they are brought up, um, uh, um, it, that's something that has nev never been uh, s seen uh, uh, be before. And, and also the, 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 the image that that is being created instantly by something getting viral. Uh, um, yesterday we had Friedrich Lichtenstein here, which is an extremely uh, uh, good example through somebody who who did all his life very interesting arts right. and stuff, uh, and and overnight he became famous with one little tiny aspect of his work. And in a commercial, in by a the commercial. way. In a commercial. That's so way. crazy. Yeah. That's so crazy. So there's something... But this is funny enough already, isn't it? That it is a commercial which makes a star right now then. We, yes. Uh, uh, um, so, so that's something that really... S that's fascinating. Uh, and, and scary, uh, scaring at the same way, uh, and, and, and for example, that there are people around whom we all don't know who have 20 million Facebook friends, and they can, if they post something, make a star out of somebody being paid within a minute. That's but new. The, I mean, the, 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 the pop world does this really well. You think about <clears throat> Britain's Got Talent, for example, or anything's got talent, any country's got talent. Um, and immediately afterwards, you will see an emotive or an emotional performance posted. Um, and if it's good enough, and if it's the right sort of performance, it sticks. Um, and maybe, you know, Paul Potts uh, might, might be an example of that from however many years ago that was. You know, one performance on one show that's then 100 million views on YouTube, that then goes viral, that then goes around the world, that then turns into a successful product and a touring career and a CD career, admittedly in a different area of a different area of classical music now, but it is possible. So what can and we I do? I think the pop it? people manage it really, really well. Okay. Uh, and perhaps manage it sometimes better than we do. There, there are some forms. Susan Boyle is another one. Yeah. Actually Susan Boyle, yeah. One performance on one um, pop format talent show started a career. <laughs> Is that really always then a question of money, Mr. Moito, as you said, that we have to think, rethink the money thing? Or isn't there in the net and in all different uh, models of uh, economy uh, ways where it happens already? I, I, I'm talking about the American series like uh, House of Cards or something, which are produced by Netflix, which are, there, there is an app and, uh, which, which actually is the new content 
uh, maker who is showing people a new way of filming in a very high quality and still earning money with that. Is that the future for music as well, that there will be content made somewhere completely else? Is, is, are you selling classica programs to Netflix soon as well? I mean, to start with the end, we would sell to everyone who is interested in <laughs> buying it. Uh, uh, why not? But Netflix is not making money on productions. I mean, this is, uh, I think, really a big mistake. I spent last eight days talking and thinking about series here because in Berlin. And anyway, it's a completely different. They do one production and they are looking very much for the same money as every other producer is uh, uh, looking for to recoup their investment out of the market. Uh, so. Yeah, if they want uh, to produce, or if they want something to show it, yes, if we agree on the commercial terms. The big issue is, which we do not have, it's the commercial terms for the industry, for content creators and content distributors. But the idea you had of Classica was almost the same, wasn't it? Yeah, but Perhaps Classica, a too early. Uh, Classica, fortunately, today we are in, I think, uh, the idea behind Classica was something which would contradict what you said at the beginning, because the idea behind Classica is that I have a product which I can show everywhere at the same time, globally, and I get not the largest possible audience in every country, but I don't get a large, and this is working. So there is audience all over the world which is looking for something, and this something can be described as the highest possible musical quality. But the big question is, is it enough? I mean, this is what we should ask. Because as far as the past was concerned, that was one of the big reasons why we decided to produce something. It was the quality of interpretation. And if we think about marketing instruments, creating starts, and so forth and so on, do not forget that not everyone is Anna Netrebko and that uh, Christian Tillemann is not Daniel Barnboim. And uh, I mean, so if someone is able to be the perfect um, in music, it doesn't mean that he is marketable as a star and so forth and so on. So it, I think it's still uh, more complex. But concert and opera houses are trying exactly that. They, like the Berlin Phil with the app, they are producing and filming their own things. Uh, they are doing the same thing in the Concertgebrau, they are doing it in Munich Opera, in New York Opera, and every one of them has a, an own app right now and you have to pay nine euro in each of them. But the future for me is clear, it will be that there is one classical music app where all these people provide their own content and I will pay my 10 euro or 15 or 20 and I can watch the live stream from uh, uh, Münchener Staatsoper one day, from the Metropolitan Opera the next day and from Berlin Phil the day after. Okay, Is so that w where we will end up? I don't, I, don't, I don't know if you know it, so uh, I mean I'm just looking for consultants who will uh, guarantee... <laughs> just have to ask, guarantee. you know? <laughs> who, will guarantee, who will guarantee me that what they tell me now will be truth in 10 years. I mean really everything which happened in the last 30 years I've been in the industry was what we saw would happen and it was completely different yeah. at the same time. So I do not believe, just to start with the, with the end, I do not believe that there will be one classical music platform for everything. I agree. What I, because it's impossible, the world doesn't function like right. that. Because if you try, nobody, there are no monopolies in modern okay. world. And even Netflixes will not remain alone, and they will be other things. They are powerful, they have a lot of money, they have marketing, even... even Deutsche Grammophon has competitors. One, I think, still. <laughs> but still. One and a half. Yeah, yeah but yeah, one and it's half. going so to monopoly. Yeah. I do not okay. think that they will... Be. That implies the second, whoever it would be, creativity grows on different places and big concerns uh, do not know how to, to get everywhere. So I'm, I'm not really concerned about it. When I said about financing, what I meant is, just to make it clear, in the fragmented distribution and exploitation, if you produce, you have to rely, as far as the future is concerned, or for the production money, on future income. And we do not know what will happen from, here, from where and so much. Second, talking about the event, all our, I mean, all the entertainment industry is based on blockbuster, 
and on and everyone who produces do you think that producers here if they are here if they produce opera from Liège uh, I mean if they talk before this is going to be the biggest event of the century not every biggest of the century being thought like that becomes the biggest event of the century okay. so events are rare so we have to do with limited Thing. But I think in music we have a very specific problems that we have more quality or more on the musical side. We have much more blockbusters in terms of right. musical quality, right. but we do not have what makes this an event of in course. another media. And the stream of the Oldenburg Theatre won't work but, either. Yeah. Right. So this is really what Mr. Bergman is asking for. This is true. But I just would like to remind you that something like Wim Wenders can be possible only if 100 other people have done ballet movies you would never show. I mean, or 50. So we need, and we have this quantity in music. Fortunately, we have a large enough basis. Is it too large? Is it becoming larger? I don't know. So this is the interesting issue. And it's not either or. This is what I'm just saying. And we should not be so German and say <laughs> it's this one and this one. As, uh, so we German scratch lots of topics <laughs> right now. And I would like to, to do a final round right. uh, to, just, uh, to, yeah, to just have an outlook. You said we should talk about the future and not about the past. So. With all these ch changes, we are in the middle of them, and as you said, we can't really see where they will end up and what comes up. What are the tasks for the next two, three years? What are the ideas we should have in mind if we offer films, if we invent films together with you? What, what direction should we think in, and what market do we want to please, perhaps each of you? Well, uh, to start with, first of all, I want to say that I do not believe that there will be one brand around the globe who will serve us with classical music. I think that... This is I said already, so... Okay, you don't I agree. <laughs> say so. The copyright is there. Okay. Okay. Copyright by you. Okay, now, what I, what I believe is that um, television is still strong. If I look to my, my revenue split, well, first of all, we have, if we say 3 to 5% of the Western population is interested in classical music, which is kind of true, um, then we're talking about 300 million people. Looks interesting, right? Um, and so I would say um, to get these people, we have different possibilities. Cinema, VOD, television, home video, uh, whatever, you know, uh, I, uh, special services, air flight, whatever. All these revenue streams we have to use, but television will be still strong. Why? I think brands like Arte, like ZDF, like BBC, like NHK, like PBS uh, are strong to, and they have a connection since 50 years to consumers, to music lovers, uh, to serve classical music. And I don't believe that in 10 years, everybody will watch all operas on Netflix. Um, is there still a strong possibility that um, people like Wolfgang Bergmann and a lot of others around the world uh, will have the position to, you know, said, okay, this event we want to co-finance because we can be sure that we get a lot of people who are watching that. Mark, what do you think? I think, um the fragmentation is good and inevitable, and what we have to do as a business um, with our artists is make every opportunity count, whether that's online, offline, in a small country, in a large country. Um, I look at my kids, who are 14 and 16, and they don't really watch television. It's mobile and it's tablet, so I don't really know where that's going in 10 to 15 years' time, and we'd love to find the consultant, maybe together. Um, no, but they are, to you to get to that, but they what are I do watching, know is... They are watching the same images elsewhere as some other people watch yeah. on television. Yeah. Right. That's right, and, and so that, that's the point, is that what we have to do is make you know, that moment for them count towards a sale and a commercial opportunity. Wolfgang, how, how, how will you get Mark's children back on TV? Um, what they, they watch Arte. Because we already do it. Your, your children it, just watch Arte, it, don't it, they? It, no, no, they don't. But <laughs> but it's part of Arte. It's part of television. We have to we, we have to forget about the definition of television being only uh, sitting in front of the La La Li and putting on uh, at uh, eight fifteen for the main news uh, show. Uh, that's shifting away slowly but steady. 
So we have to be careful that we still feed the other platforms, that we feed the internet, that we be smart enough to, to do our own algorithms. And we have to be careful that our, the politicians allow us to de develop algorithms uh, that reach the audience because customer-orientated marketing nowadays is forbidden for public television, whereas uh, the Googles and uh, um, uh, uh, iTunes of the world can target each and every single um, vi uh, um, viewer uh, and, and, and address him. So if this remains like that, of course, we are without any chance for the future. Okay. But I, I hope these walls will break down and then we can do good television on each and every platform and that's what what we that's what we are going to do and art is thank god um, uh, improving in this field so you still ask for lots of different ideas and you will find spaces for them as soon as they are attractive we oui. uh, <laughs> for you how what what do you expect with the next two or three years what what will be the things changing what what will nhk do Mm. As you noticed already, and our background is really different from you, but uh, um, f uh, personally speaking, uh, education is the most important thing for a Japanese audience, so maybe I try more the experimental programs. And then, maybe, uh, as, as I said earlier, uh, I have to concentrate to make a kind of, um, how can I say that? But the total, total rating system, right. and then the kind of scheme. Hmm? Try to, I, I, I would like to try to make such a scheme. Okay. And then, and I totally agree with his idea to try to make uh, more events in Japan, right. or hopefully connecting with your countries, all countries. Right. Yes. Because we are all just repeating what uh, Jan Moito is saying, he shall have the last word, so we don't have to repeat what you are saying. What's your perspective? I would like to... You're bad. <laughs> Before I say that, I would, uh, because Anka Monica Pandelea is here and she once got very angry with me because I had forgotten to mention ZDF. So I want to give it her back now. Uh, she, ZDF, your mother company, uh, tell her. Um, you can skip it, she has left. <laughs> ZDF, your mother company. Something good about Arte. ZDF, your mother company, uh, is showing in two weeks a new series based on Ferdinand von Schirach's novels, six hours. The series, for those who, who do not know, has been put into your catch-up, whatever, uh, cinematic, telematic, so can be seen before it's broadcast, it can be seen online. This is a completely, this is a revolution, because public network, who has financed the production, is putting it first into another system, right. and it's still, it's programmed, so this is, I think it works with the Tatort already as well. Yeah, yeah. but the, the, the not with the New Year's concert. No, those are news. Uh, this is a new production, six right. hours. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so as far as we are concerned, Unitel, it's very simple. We will try to continue producing better and cheaper, and it's possible, but not to decrease the quantity because I believe in content, and I really think it will be in all what we are discussing the element the most important element if we survive till then. Um, the second issue is in, in, the, in the case of music, we have to take care, and this is also personal, Unitel, um, of assuring the ways of distribution. That's why we do Classica, which do this in 40 countries, which is, yeah, let's say a success. And that's why we have to contribute to the creation of classical music platform, which will not be the only one, but I hope it will be the most important one, and it will be European, with the difference to the others. This is not only which I hope, but I think it would make sense, because we should not make us any illusions. We are economically not important for anyone like Netflix or whatever this niche, that we would be, we would get the same attention as 
soccer gets or house of cards gets or whatever. So I think the creation of the platform is a European, is a European issue. Right. Did you want to say one more thing? Don't repeat what he said, just to <laughs> Otherwise he will blame you. <laughs> you will. <laughs> Wolfgang. No, in, in, is, is, would you share this pl platform with others? Not only that I would share this platform with others, I think it has to be a joint effort. But the platform can't be a platform of one orchestra, hoping that other orchestras will come under the same roof. We are still humans. I mean, why should I be? So the question is who is, who is there and who is behind the platform? And I really think it would be a big European, was of big European effort. But if you look at Europe now and read discussions about the not having exclusivity and things, so you just can say, okay, forget them and do it yourself, otherwise it will never happen. So we will them, I mean politicians. So we will see what will happen. I think this in, uh, discussion was interesting because we, well, at least I learned uh, that it's not just the idea which counts, but as well the market, how we will bring it on different platforms on different uh, channels, uh, whether it's the big event, whether it's the social aspect of music, whether it is um, the idea of splitting one idea into different ways of narration or do the big thing with the big stars. Uh, everything is possible. I think it's a time where so many things are possible as they haven't been possible before because we are all tortured to invent new forms and new ideas. And uh, if I understood that right, everybody is um, asked by all of you to be as creative as possible and to think not just in the aspect of the one film, but, uh, but as well in the aspects of um, a changing market and how it can hook in there. Thank you very much for participating in this discussion and I think you're still around. So um, out there I think I saw some plates as well. Thank you for joining this discussion and uh, probably it will go on afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you.